Hey guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you whatever I've been working on in the craft room, and maybe we'll have a little chitter chatter at the end of what's going on in my life this week. Like almost every sewer right now, I've been working on masks. I just have these two here. These were part of something I was working on. I did have an, a previous neighbor that have moved from Florida to Texas and they wanted to purchase some masks. So I did send them to her. But for some reason on this one, I really pleated really well on this side and not so well on this side. So as you can see, they do not match. But that's okay. It is still going to work perfectly fine for me. I like to wear a mask while making masks, if that makes sense. That way I'm not getting any of my cough, sneezes, breath, spittle, whatever on any of the masks that I'm sewing. So even though this is going to not be even on either side, the most important part is going to be the part that's covering my face and that's going to work well. For these, I have a little bit of a, a trouble getting a straight line on these. This has a pipe cleaner chenille stick in it. And I also took some of this green gardening wire. It's got plastic coating on it. It's just that thin wire that they're suggesting to put in for those little nose pincher plate there. So I took this and I wrapped it around the chenille stick, not in any great abundance. Let me see if I have one around. I used up all the ones that I made ahead of time, but what I did is I just took out the wire. I was using, um, I think I used about three quarters length of the pipe cleaner. Some people were saying just cut it in half, like six inches, which would be about half of these. But I thought that that was, I was concerned that I didn't get it in the right position in the mask, that maybe it'd be a little off putting on the nose and I didn't want anyone to get poked even though I rounded off the edges. So I just went ahead and I went with three quarters of mine. That way I definitely got it in that halfway point. I filled in that spot and wherever their nose happens to land, because I'm going to guess not all of our noses are perfect, right? Compared to where our ears are. I know my glasses don't sit right, so my ears are in the wrong spots. But that way I knew that they would be able to pinch it on their nose wherever they needed to. So I just took the wire, and when I took my pliers, I just rounded this over. And I just kind of took the wire, and I just kind of wrapped it around. Nothing special, just to give it that little extra oomph so that if it was bending over and over, it would stay nice and strong enough. Because so I thought if people were saying to use two of these, some people were saying just one pipe cleaner is enough, and that's what I used on the children's ones, but then other people were saying to double it over. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna take both ideas and stick them together. And then after wearing the mask similar to this one, it worked out really well, so I thought, well, that's what I'm gonna go with. I picked this up at the Dollar Tree. You get two of these, you get this spool and then a backup one and it has the cutter on it already. I just ended up using old scissors because I found it easier than trying to always get this to cut right. So I thought, well, I don't, oh, there we go. See, see how much you gotta get wiggling? But you can use old toenail clippers or old scissors and it cuts it fine. And there was nothing wrong with this one, except I wasn't really thinking straight. I put black fabric on all the back of them and it has white thread, which is perfectly fine. But I thought if any of the guys that I made these for didn't quite like the fabric, they could always reverse it and have it on the black side, which once again is still perfectly fine. But I thought it would be nice to have black thread there instead of the white. So that's when I switched to the black thread. And most of the masks that I made were more of a darker color, so the black worked fine. Let me put up right here the mask that I did make to send to my friend. So she ended up having seven adults and three for the small children. And of course, two of the little girls, I gave them the Frozen 2, and then the boy had the cars with Lightning McQueen on it. So that would be a little bit fun for them, right? And then the rest I tried to just kind of mix up and make sure there was some for the boys with the John Deere tractors and the regular tractors and some for the girls that were kind of general neutral and stuff like that. So they should be very happy with them. So as part of the mask making extravaganza, I did work on some for my children. They are not actually wearing them right now because they're not really going out. Miranda's been on vacation all week with their recent move. So everyone's been kind of like staying home and hunkering down, which is really great. But I wanted to have some ready for them for when they were ready. I didn't put any of the elastic in yet because everyone's got a different size head and I wanna make sure, I don't wanna to cut too short of elastic and waste it and I don't wanna cut too long of elastic and waste it because right now elastic is prime gold, right? So I have the rounded elastic to put in for these. 
Once again, I just went with all the, nope, I gave a variety of colors. Mostly I went with the black. That way, once again, the boys, even though it would have some color on the side, they could wear it reversed if they want. Now these are my kids. I don't care if it's white on the outside. They can just suffer with it, right? So I went with some dolphins for Miranda. I made a couple for myself. Oh, with Miranda's, she likes a red and burgundy and stuff, so I did have some of this burgundy fabric I put on the inside for her. Once again, it's not like they're going to actually wear them the other way around. And they're only gonna wear them, you know, push comes to shove, because like I said, the boys really aren't leaving in the house. So yeah, so she's really into dolphins and stuff. She always liked dolphins, so I went ahead with those just because I knew I was safe with those and I wouldn't pick something that was too flowery or too purple or too yellow or too whatever for her. And then I made these for myself because I like to stand out like a sore thumb. So I have these really bright colored, uh, I believe these are crocodiles because they have the pointed snout. And I went for some light bulbs because, hey, I always got a brilliant idea, right? And for me, I just went with this really soft blue on the inside just because I wanted to use up this fabric and I didn't want to put another novelty in. And of course, this way we have them be in different fabrics so you know which is the inside and which isn't. But with this design, I'm going to put a link to the pattern that I use for this. This is the one that most people are using for this design from Craft Passion. She'd come out with these years and years ago. Uh, they had a lot of I think they had a lot of smoke and fog and bad air quality where they lived at the time. So she wanted to make sure her kids were safe when they were outside. So this might have been from, I think, maybe 2006 or something like that or six years ago. One of those things. So she'd come up with this design herself and I really liked it. I like the way it fits on the face. And over the years, I've seen a lot of people in over in like uh, the Japanese cultures and stuff. They were wearing these when they go out. They have the different pop culture designs and fabrics that they would have. So this is a very common design for them. It just fits the face nice and snug like. So yeah, so that's why I like these. I just like the way it kind of hugs my face and it seems to fit it a little bit better than the pleated. I know everyone, like I said, everyone has a different face and everyone has different requirements. So I did like these. But for the boys, I just went with simple, plain Basic blue, nothing too fancy and excited. Robbie loves blue, so that'll work with him. Justin, you know, I think he's not going to, boys aren't going to go out like this. Miranda, she's got the guts. She, she's like, you know, to hell with everyone. I'm just going to do what I want, right? She kind of hangs out with mama, so we don't mind standing out. We um, we tend to make ourselves a little noticeable when we're out in public anyways, because we tend to get a little goofy when we're together. The boys really don't like to stand out, so that's why I went with blue for them, because not everyone needs to be crazy, right? And again, they do have the black. It does have the white on the inside with the thread, but they can go ahead and just wear it either way. So I got to get these to them in the next couple days. Like I said, get the elastic, let them try it on so I can cut the elastic just right, tie it in a knot, and the knot will just slide right into these little casings, which is good for these. I did have the opportunity to actually have a little fun here at the house, and it wasn't all about masks because... When you're making one, it's not too bad, but when you start making eight, 10, 12, or 15 of them, it does take a lot of time. Before we get totally off the mass subject, I just wanna say that my area hospitals and places in my area, they have not been requesting masks. They say, if you want to donate them, you can, but it's not something that they are gonna, they're gonna keep it in storage and they're not gonna use it right now because they don't actually have a need for them. They have whatever their routine is and how they planned ahead. And a lot of places here have been donating the N95 masks to them. So they are in really good shape. We haven't heard anything from any of the smaller places. Like, I think a lot of times it becomes more of a personal thing that if someone you know sews and you work in a dentist, a vet, a retirement center, you tend to ask those persons, those people for those masks. So it hasn't been a broadcasted wide out in the open that I'm aware of mass situation. I've also decided that I could make them and mail them away, but I'm holding off just a little bit. I have this feeling that even though right now Wendy's is not using masks or anything like that, that it may become a time that all their employees are going to need them. So I want to be available and have the supplies and the time available for my daughter's employees so that I can make each of them a couple of masks also. And not to try to capitalize on a situation, but I'm also going to put some masks in my shop and have those available for purchase. So if anyone is interested in purchasing any of them, there will be a listing coming up in the next few days. 
I want to have friends and family have a way to contact me to, you know, make an order and have an easy way to just grab them and have them mailed to them. And I think the easiest way for me to keep track of everyone is to list them in my shop and have them purchase them that way so that I can easily keep track of who wants what and how many and such like that. And like most people that are making masks, I'm sorry, you've got nothing good to look at here. And like most people that are going to be selling masks, first of all, I'm going to keep it at a very reasonable price. I have seen some on Etsy that are really quite high. And I think around the $12 range is pretty reasonable due to all the extra fees attached to selling things online and the cost of materials and time involved. So I think that's a really reasonable price. What I plan on doing with the shop, like I have said, I've seen many shops do it also. It's going to be, you place an order for how many masks you want and I choose the fabric. I'm going to allow a little bit of a choice of masculine and feminine because I do have some specifically masculine and specifically feminine fabric. Otherwise, as you've seen, it's just all fun novelty stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at, you, know, you place an order for a certain number and I will choose the fabrics. That way it's going to take up too much time and the amount of time it takes to keep all this organized and to make masks for everyone in my life and for anyone that else might need them. Yeah, I need to have simplicity. I'm sure everyone understands that. Okay, away from the mask. Now I showed you on last Friday's tutorial that I had made all of those Polaroid blocks. In my Patreon group on Sunday, I went ahead and did a video on how to put them together and make, I made this little nine patch here. I thought it'd be a fun little wall hanging, but you can also make it for a pillow or your table runner. Or you could, you know, just about anything you want. See if I turn it sideways, if you could see it. Eh. So I thought that was really fun. I have many more made. I believe I showed you those. You saw those all in last week's video. I have not had a chance to make any more, even though I do have all the two and a half inch squares cut and ready to go. I'd like to go ahead and go through my stash and find some more of the solid and semi-solid colors to change the Polaroid frame from white into a variety of colors because I think that would be fun on projects. I also want to make some smaller ones using the more of like the postage stamp size, more of the one and a half inches so it finishes off at like an inch inside there. Those will work good for zipper pouches and stuff like that because while these are going to be good, you can use them as a real big statement piece. If I want to go crazy and have a lot of them, I think it'd be better to have the little center part a little bit smaller. So these are just going to be waiting for me in an old swap package. This apparently was swap number three or block number three or group number three. Doesn't matter. It still works perfectly fine to hold these blocks for me for now until I'm ready to turn them into something amazing. So if anyone's interested in seeing what the Patreon group is all about, I have a link down below in the description box. It's basically another way to support me in the channel. And in return, I do extra videos for you guys. I have a video every week, depending on what tier you're at. I do my live streams over there. And I also send out reward packages in the mail. So periodically throughout the year, you get them for joining and you also get them throughout the year as a surprise. But all the information is linked down below. I have an introductory video for my Patreon and I also have areas where it describes all the different tiers and what you would receive based on what tier you decide to join. So all of that is what kept me busy this week. What have you guys been working on? I'm going to guess that a lot of you are going to say you were either making masks or looking at videos for masks. There are so many videos out there now. I found it really interesting when I first made my video. I'll put a link up there. That was quite a bit ago now. It feels like a lifetime ago, but I think it was probably in the beginning of March or into February, somewhere in there. But when I first made that video, the ones that I were watching to get all the different information and stuff, I, I was watching a lot of Japanese and Chinese and, and just, I'm, don't know the difference between the two, so they, for me, they're pretty similar. But you can easily read, they put the dimensions and stuff on the video. So I was trying to figure everything out from there. And then I'd refound the Craft Passion one, so I started working on those. But now there's just so many videos out there, and it's kind of interesting that while the majority of them are the same, they're all just a little bit different because everyone adds their own little spin to things. So it's kind of been fun to watch the different videos to pick up extra tips and tricks to see you know, what other things you can do to make it quicker, easier, and make a different mask. But I wanna say I've been following Craft Passion 
This will show you how long I've been following her. I followed her blog before Facebook really started up. Before I joined Facebook many, many years ago, what is it, I, 2005 maybe? How long has it been since Facebook's been around? But I was reading her blogs and following her tutorials and talking with her about crochet and stuff before the both of us joined and hopped on the Facebook wagon. Now I know Facebook was around for the college kids prior to that, but when it really became started here as a, as a place for the rest of us to join in and chat and chat with everyone. So yeah, that's, it's been kind of interesting to watch how things have changed. As I said, I, I, I've told you guys before that I was on Flickr many years ago and doing all the swaps and being in the different groups and stuff like that. And that was before Facebook. And now we have all the different Facebook groups and everything and Instagram and things have changed so much. And yet we just keep recycling back these Polaroid blocks for her from back when I was on Flickr and doing all the different swaps back then. The craft passion mask, I actually read about that and I, I read her story when she first posted it on her blog on the original time that it posted. And now I'm hearing her name because she does have an easy printable for that pattern all floating through all the different videos and the different places and stuff where people are talking about masks. So I think that's really great that everyone's just kind of sharing all their knowledge and things that are old are coming back new again. And it's great to be able to think that something that she used back then and people were making fabric masks back then that now it's going to be helpful for us nowadays. We have finally got some rain last night. I woke to a lot of rain. I saw the water just running down the road in the middle of the night. It was really great to finally get a good soaker because I've been watering my flowers every morning. So I hadn't watered it in like 36 hours because they were saying it was gonna rain during the day and it never rained and then it finally rained at night. So I was really happy about that. So everything's got a good soaking. Things are gonna go ahead and start sprouting up. So another thing that's really great about the rain is that rain has washed a lot of the allergens out of the air because we haven't had rain in quite a while here. It, it's our dry season, so it's to be expected, but it's really nice when we get a good drenching, especially when it's overnight and there's no heat around. So it was actually kind of cool last night, as in chilly cool, not cold, but you know, with the cold rain and everything, it was really nice. Washed it all down, soaked the ground really well. So that's gonna be really good for a lot of people. We are high into vegetable season and stuff here. The big farms are growing all their produce and stuff, so I'm sure they appreciate the rain. That's all I have for you guys this week. I hope everyone is staying safe. I hope everyone's staying sane, and I hope everyone's getting a little bit of their projects done. I've talked to a few of you, and a lot of people are going back and finishing off a lot of their UFOs from years before, and several of you are just like, hey, it's a good time to start a new project, right? I am really feeling the pull to start a new project. So in between everything that's going on, I do have a few ideas that I would love to start some new projects and play with a little bit of scraps. We'll see if I can get to those this week. That little bit of rain we got last night will mean I'm going to have to do a little weeding in the next couple days because not only do the flowers grow, but the weeds grow too. So I hope everyone is staying safe, stay healthy, be well, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!